Salutations, respective viewers. This is George from Ireland. Here I am in York Minster, um, one of the largest Gothic cathedrals in the world. There are at least two in France which are larger. So, um, give, you, give you a view of the ceiling there. Anyway, um, so your cathedral is the fourth Christian place of worship to stand on this site. The first one was built in 627 for the baptism of a local uh, Anglo-Saxon king, um, Ethelbert. Um, and the church was then upgraded to be a cathedral. Um, and then the Normans built one, and then there was one built from 1220 to 1472. So this was a building site for 252 years um, and is very well preserved for various reasons, I'll tell you. Uh, it's got all this medieval uh, stained glass, more so than you can see really anywhere else uh, in uh, Great Britain. Um, because you go to the English Civil War, the 1640s, and um, the parliamentarians took over and they were mostly uh, Puritans, that's extreme Protestants, and they considered this all Catholic because, of course, until 1533, England was a Catholic country. And so, in most other cathedrals, they smashed the glass. Now, you will see um, uh, stained glass in um, other uh, English cathedrals, Anglican cathedrals, not just Roman Catholic ones. Those are usually Victorian recreations of what they assumed it was like, but they mostly had to study York. It was very well preserved here because the parliamentarian general who took York in the English Civil War was Sir Thomas Fairfax, the son of a Yorkshire peer. And he was immensely proud of uh, this splendid artwork. And indeed, the Fairfax family had a house very close to the cathedral, a main country estates closer to Leeds. Anyway, he um, told his soldiers they must not smash any paint, uh, stained glass, and any act of iconoclasm would be punished with death. So, and that is why it's so well preserved. Because um, we're going back to an era when most people were illiterate and to understand the biblical stories they had to be illustrated with stained glass. I can't remember quite what the technique is. And look here, there's the lectern. For some reason, the Church of England, they always have an eagle for the lectern. I saw it in a Roman Catholic church recently as well. Why an eagle? Usually Catholic churches, we don't have an eagle lectern, just a plain lectern, doesn't resemble anything. Got its claws over this globe, perhaps representing the world. Um, so there's the altar, two candles, Catholic cathedrals have got six candles, three on either side of the cross. Look, here it is a cross, no figure of Christ. The Catholic Church, we have a crucifix as an image of Jesus affixed to it. Okay? But I choose you, said Ego Elegivos. Um, and that is the cathedra, the Archbishop of York's church. At the moment is John Sentamu, who's uh, originally Ugandan, born in Uganda, became a judge. Um, uh, he got himself into trouble with Idi Amin, the tyrant there, because um, uh, Judge Sentamu stood up for justice, so he fled for his life to the United Kingdom. He took another degree at the University of Cambridge in the 70s. He was ordained in the Church of England, he was Bishop of Southwark and so on. And then he uh, was translated to York in um, seven, uh, 2005. So the second highest clergyman in the Church of England. Didn't get the Archbishop Eric of Canterbury when that came up. So various uh, uh, dioceses, Winchester, look at the two cross keys, silver and gold. Seems like a symbol of the papacy. And then York, a Y for York. And then Southwark, look it's the, um, the bishop's mitre. Because remember it came back to Pentecost, the flames coming out of the um, bishop's, uh, the, the disciples' heads. That's what they got that symbol for a bishop. And what else? So much symbolism. Ah. General Command of the Victorian Order, this symbol, that's what the GCVO stands for. And look at the sort of Maltese cross in the middle, and that uh, curious eight-pointed silver star. A bit too small for me to read in the middle. So there we are, my eyesight must be going. And then the Archbishop of Weber can walk up here and preach from here. We preach, oh, okay, that's what it says, Christ, yes. Uh, and then memorials to a couple of the people who held the Sea of York. Cosmo Gordon Lang and William Temple. Their coats of arms. Um, okay, so we could go on for hours and hours. Look at kneelers if you want to kneel down to pray. And these little cushions to kneel on if you want to kneel to pray. When I was into mortification of the flesh, I sometimes would, would kneel on the bare stone. Really killed my knees as though suffering somehow from Jesus God. Um, so look at this. Uh, this is the west window. And that heart symbol up top, people often call it the heart of Yorkshire. It's been known as the heart of Christ in Catholic times. So I might have to zoom in for a bit to tell you what's what. So plenty of tourists 
10 pounds 50 to come in if you want to go up to the top 257 steps to the top of the tower another five quid robbing bastards another five quid to go into, into, into the crypt that's the underground section any secret or hidden in ancient Greek where people are buried well the people buried up here as well uh, we don't want it that bright and we want to zoom in um, and another 10 pounds for the chapter that's where the monks had a chapter read to them when they had monks here in the 1530s look at that zoom all the way in so maybe Christ at the top the Blessed Virgin and then um, the 12 Bosp Apostles and then various Archbishops of York this is the Melton window Archbishop Melton he had it he had it built in 1339 we believe he's depicted here we don't know which one he is because there are any names on them Melton is in Melton Mowbray okay and look at above here another image of Jesus Christ so it suffered a very serious fire in the early 19th century more like the mid 19th century actually some bloke up there took a candle up was told not to do it part of his work in the cathedral left it when he went home and it caught fire and then it caused this this roof which to uh to, to fall and the whole thing smashed down and some of the stone was turned slightly pink you may see a slightly pinkish hue but they rebuilt it in the mid 19th century and the victorians had had scaffolding up here to allow people to very carefully study all these they'd um, made drawings and paintings of them was able to rebuild all of them and one of them shows um, the blessed virgin with um, jesus as a suckling and she was breastfeeding him but victorian prudery being what it was they couldn't possibly tolerate that and they had him uh, had her bottle feeding him um, and so it goes on okay and then we've got the ascension somewhere or other we just see a pair of feet as jesus christ is going up you have to look for it yourself in more detail these are all wood painted gold look at all these coat of arms right up there they're not there for and then right at the end up high on the left you can see the y for york archbishop of york been held by some very distinguished people including thomas cardinal wolsey that's in the catholic era what are these people doing here what are they doing here they are doing semaphore they can read semaphore what does that mean that means Christ is here. So, what I was going to say about Christ is here, um, that was put up for an art exhibition in 2005. The chapter, as in the governing body of the cathedral, liked it. They said it could stay, and it re reflects the 1640s, or even the 1540s, where they smashed loads of heads off statues of saints, headless statues. You can tell something was a saint, not Jesus, because it had a halo. So they're using halos, as it were, not heads, to single this out. But they removed them for the making of a film from a Robinson Crusoe film, because of course Robinson Crusoe was supposedly born in York. Um, that fictional character was really about Alexander Selkirk. Anyhow, then they um, put them back after the film, because it really wouldn't have been here in the 18th century, but they put them back in the wrong sequence. Ended up spreading, spelling, Chris is there. The chap called Chris, it worked a rubber like that. Look at the Blessed Virgin, Jesus, all the rest of it. Three lines of England, I'm not sure that isn't the right. So, anyway, at the far end, we're going to get past the huge organ. Uh, that, sorry, that's not supposed to be vulgar. And see the east window, the, 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 the altars at the east facing Jerusalem. This part of the world altars should always be at the east. The Michael Kirk and Gordon's are supposed to be at the west, that was a mistake. Someone said it was sacrilegious. Is it devil worship? Um, and look at this, like the, 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 the prow of a, of a Norse warship sticking out. I don't know, I presume it's just a reproduction. I don't know why it'd be there. And you can walk way up here, you see the red curtains are. And you know, you could just stay here all day studying the stained glass. So, um, only way up is walk. Then in 1984, another fire broke out here at York Minster. And um, uh, fortunately, it wasn't too badly damaged. The fire brigade that July took the decision to pour the water onto a bit of the roof, knowing that it would collapse a portion of the roof, but it would actually save more of the cathedral and stop the fire spreading too badly. So um, by the time I visited in 1993, the cathedral was fully functional, it had almost completely rebuilt. Some of the external masonry wasn't replaced until 1998. So many important events took place here because of course York was considered an extraordinarily important city. And there's so many archbishops are buried in here and other distinguished personages. There are memorials to all sorts of uh, uh, celebrities, I suppose we'd call them now, here, politicians, judges, generals, 
And this is, this is a memorial chapel to the soldiers from Yorkshire who were killed in the First World War, France and Flanders and various other theatres of war, battles like Gallipoli, Aisne, also in France. Okay, so this is called the transept. The transept is where the cathedral goes out wider because the cathedral makes a cross shape. So this is, have I got it right? This is the north transept and this is the south transept. So you can see they've got Norman arches when they started rebuilding it in the, um, uh, from 1220. Wider and higher than would have been possible for them. They don't want a simple monster with an angel above it. And that's the high tower in the middle. Um, so it was the tallest thing in the United Kingdom for a while, well even before there was the United Kingdom, the British Isles perhaps I should say, and the nave is longer than, than the Canterbury Cathedral, slightly, I wonder if that was one-upmanship. Okay, so looking back down the nave, um, <clears throat> so we shall go on, and as I pointed out in another video, there was the last royal wedding here was 1960, for one of the Queen's cousins, um, is it um, Prince Michael of Kent, if I got that right? He married a local lady and um, they got married here. It's the first royal wedding in York for centuries. So memorials to more people than I care to read about. They're plaques, they're usually not actually buried in here, um, but uh, they uh, just have a memorial here. They're sometimes buried in the crypt, they're sometimes buried elsewhere. But you want as many people to know about it as possible, you put this in here and they've often got images of them like that. So well worth visiting. This is the choir bit. No guesses, no, sorry, no prizes for guessing why it's called the choir. And a second altar up here, because sometimes the nave is just too big. They're not going with that many worshippers. Another lectern of the symbol of an eagle. Another pulpit from which to preach. A sound board at the top to project the sound before they had uh, any, um, any loudspeaker system. And various stalls were various distinguished personages, whoever office holders in the cathedral, would get one of these stalls ex officio, like the presenter, as in that's director of music, and the dean, not quite sure what he is, and so forth. Uh, so dean is some sort of ecclesiastical position, there's prebendary, again I don't really know what prebendary does, so I'm going to have to finish very soon, partly because I'm bursting for the Nihilatorium. Look at this, 16th century imagery. Very fine, isn't it? There they are, kneeling in attitude of prayer. And often the memorials are in Latin, only in the 18th century they moved to being in English. Excuse me. Uh, so we'll just have down there to the crypt, where there are many more people entombed. How about that? With the funerary urn behind, even though I very much doubt their ashes. Christianity was, was not keen on, on, on cremation for centuries. Only the 20th century become acceptable. They associated with paganism. People were going to be cremated in extremis. One of the side chapels or anti-chapels here looks like an image of Mother Teresa. In these ecumenical times here in the Church of England, they don't mind uh, Catholic saints being commemorated, as in really from the Catholic era, I mean, after the Reformation. So there we have the East Window. Most people sometimes say it's haunted. So there's just an endless number of things you could learn about this or commentate about here in, in, in York Minster. So really, it's um, the um, uh, Metropolitical um, uh, Cathedral and Church of St. Peter. Um, Metropolitical being like the adjective of metropolitan. This is a metropolis, a big city. Only 200,000 people now. <laughs> In the 11th century, there were only 4,000 people. That was big by the time, sense of the time. But commonly called York Minster, despite its official name. St. William is the, is the patron saint of, of, of York. Don't ask me why. You know, Constantine the Great, the Roman Emperor, was proclaimed Emperor here at York, Ibarakum as then was, and he later declared that Christianity was the official faith of the Roman Empire a bit later. Right, I'll switch it off now.